Thanks for being here. Subscribe to Cheating Stories Best, so you don't miss new stories. Your wife takes your brother to your house. That's the story we have today. Enjoy the show. Molly Jacobs was an ordinary 15-year-old teenage girl. She was hormonal, constantly rebelled, and was frequently angry with her mother, Linda. Linda constantly tried to control her, telling her what she was doing was wrong and what she should do. She didn't like Molly's friends or the way she dressed. In short, she was a control freak. Linda didn't listen to Molly, never asking what was important to her or how school was going. She didn't even know who her daughter's best friends were, but she tried to control who Molly hung out with and made friends with. These traits really strained their relationship, and although Molly understood that her mother only wanted the best, Linda's best would never be Molly's best. On the other hand, Molly's father, Jim, or Jimmy as everyone called him, was completely calm. He had learned from a young age that there was no need to sweat the small stuff. In fact, Jimmy encouraged Molly to live as individual a life as possible, as long as she did not harm herself or others. No pills, no intim, no bullying, no lies or omissions. If she wanted blue hair, Jimmy would say, go for it. If she wanted to pierce her nose, Jimmy would sign the permission slip. Jimmy was gentle, but the two hard and clear rules he had were not to lie and to always be faithful. He told Molly that she should express her feelings, speak directly, and avoid secrets. He said, Molly, secrets can burn a hole in your personality and in your life. Secrets eventually come out, and if they fester for too long, by the time the secrets come out, they cause more and more damage. His other rule, fidelity, was formulated as loyalty and honesty to family, friends, and oneself. You must be true to your morals and ethics, he'd say. You must be loyal to your friends, teaching them to make better decisions and supporting them. Because of these traits, Jimmy had many friends, and this helped him earn a good reputation as a copyright lawyer. He was a partner in a high-tech copyright law firm, but he always made time to watch Molly's soccer and softball games, as well as any school events she was involved in. He always made time to walk, bike, fish, kayak, and camp with her because he knew she was growing up fast, and soon she wouldn't be able to do those things with him. His wife, Linda, visited sometimes but usually skipped these outings, so Molly and her father formed an incredibly close bond, and Linda was even a little jealous of it. Every Wednesday, Linda had the day off, and she told Jimmy and Molly that she would use the day to cook, catch up on housework, go shopping, and maybe visit her parents. On Wednesdays when Molly returned home, she repeatedly saw Jimmy's older brother, Dan, driving his pickup down the street, as if he had just been at their house. When she asked Linda if Uncle Dan was visiting, Linda would sometimes answer no, which seemed odd because his truck was parked on their block. Sometimes Linda would say that yes, Dan would come over to ask her about a landscaping project he was going to help them with, or to borrow some of Jimmy's tools, or to see if Jimmy was home so he could talk to him. Molly found it all a little strange. Linda was usually home before Molly finished school at 5.30 after sports practice and always before Jimmy, who arrived at the earliest at 6 o'clock and at the latest at 9 p.m. That day at school, just after lunch, around 12.30, Molly began having severe cramps due to her menstrual cycle. She asked the teacher if she could see the nurse and convinced her to let her go home. She called her mother, Linda, but the phone went to voicemail. She tried again and got the same result, so she left her a short message. Mom, I'm not feeling well, so I'm leaving school. It's only 10 blocks, so I'll walk, but if you get this message, you can pick me up. I'll go home on Maple Street. Thank you. Molly walked home, but Linda never called back. When Molly came around the bend in the street on her block, she saw Uncle Dan's truck parked in the driveway. He probably needs some more tools or something, she thought. Molly walked up the path, and the door was locked, which seemed a little strange. She opened the door with her keys. The ground floor was dark and quiet, and there was no one in the kitchen. She dropped her backpack and looked into the garage to see if Uncle Dan was rummaging around the workbench for tools, but it too was empty. When she returned, she heard someone upstairs groaning and breathing heavily. She was intrigued and quietly walked up the steps and down the hallway to her parents' bedroom. She peeked around the doorframe and was stunned to see her mom Linda having intimate with Uncle Dan they both makes a sound. 
She quickly backed away in shock and tears she didn't know what to do, but when the anger over her uncle's and her mother's betrayal of Jimmy's father sunk into her mind she became angry very angry she looked around again this time with her phone and video camera on Linda and Dan not noticing Molly continued their debauchery me you dirty boy and don't stop she screamed. Dan replied I love intimate with you and I'll have you better than little Jimmy ever did. They both laughed and it made Molly furious. Molly entered the room and screamed you are cheating. How could you do this to our family and to Uncle Dan, your own brother's wife? I hate both of you, you pathetic pieces of. Both Dan and Linda looked around, confused that someone was there. They recoiled in horror when they saw Molly filming them and yelling at them. Molly turned and ran down the stairs. Linda screamed, Oh God, no, Molly, please come back. It's not what you think. Please, Molly, come here and talk to me. She ran down the hallway after Molly, but Molly was out the front door before Linda even came down from the top of the stairs. Linda ran back and shouted to Dan, Get dressed and start your truck. We have to catch her, we have to convince her not to tell Jimmy. It will destroy him, and he will kill us both quicker. Oh God, what have I done? She burst into sobs and tears, and Dan shouted, Okay, you can cry and then feel a pang of guilt, but now get dressed and let's go. Molly ran through the backyards. Her phone rang. It was Linda calling. Molly didn't answer, and the phone went to voicemail. She ran to the Nine M Creek nature trails where he and his father walked and jogged along these paths. They had a favorite resting place located between five massive cottonwood trees they called our trees, and sometimes they would race each other along the trail to see who could get there first. Molly climbed behind the trees, sat down, put her head on her knees, and began to cry. How could mom do this to her father and her? How could Uncle Dan cheat on Jimmy, his brother, with his wife? She was crying, tears flowing down her cheeks. She continued to ignore her mother's calls. She didn't want to talk to her, not now, and probably never again. She was desperate, and when this happened, she always reached out to her father. By this time, Linda had called Molly many times. But no one answered. She saw and responded to Molly's voicemail, saying she wasn't feeling well, was leaving school, and was looking for a car. While Linda was kissing and caressing Dan, she ignored the calls, deciding that it was most likely Jimmy calling, and the last thing she wanted was for the caresses to be interrupted by a call from her husband. She felt a mixture of guilt along with a sense of lust and excitement for doing something wrong in secret, which added the thrill to her life that she needed. She had been sleeping with Dan behind Jimmy's back on Wednesdays for about 10 weeks now. She knew it had to end. She knew that it interfered with her relationship with her family. She knew that it would be a complete disaster for her marriage if they found out, but she simply didn't have the strength to cut Dan off. She justified to herself that it was something just for her, that it would never hurt Jimmy. She didn't seem to let it interfere with her marriage, although she didn't realize that it created an emotional barrier in her relationship with her family probably out of guilt. If only she could force herself to think about the likely outcome, how could she be so stupid as to jeopardize everything that really meant something to her? Now she hated herself for what she had done, or maybe she just hated the fact that she was caught. She didn't have time to analyze all of this right now, but she was afraid that she would have to dig deeper to understand why the hell she had taken such a risk. Now that her daughter had called her and ran away, she had truly begun to understand how many people could be harmed by her actions including herself. She didn't understand how she allowed this to happen. She loved Jimmy and Molly more than anyone in the world, and she knew that this affair would ruin her marriage, but she simply could not control the lust and excitement of indulging in this secret vice of hers. But now she couldn't bear to think about what could happen to her family and how she had just destroyed the man and daughter she loved, and in doing so, destroyed herself. She desperately called Molly and tried to leave messages to convince her to talk and not let Jimmy know what Molly saw, as it would destroy him. Molly continued to ignore Linda's calls and decided to call her father. She called him, and he picked up after the second ring. Hey little rebel, what's going on? Aren't you at school? Are you okay? Jimmy heard the tears and sobs of his daughter, who was clearly suffering. Molly, what happened? Are you injured? Where are you? Where's your mother? Dad, please come quickly. I need you. I'm by the trees. 
Don't tell your mom or answer her calls until you get to me, please. Molly, why did you and Linda have a big fight? Are you okay? What's happening? Just do it, Dad. Just come quickly. No calls to or from Mom, please. Please, just do it. I'm fine, but I need you right now. Okay, take care of yourself and don't move. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Jimmy stormed out of his office and, not wanting to waste time explaining to Beth, simply told her, one client had a nervous breakdown, so we have to run tomorrow. I'll tell you everything. He ran out of the building to his SUV. His phone rang again, and he saw it was Linda. He didn't answer as he promised Molly. He let the call go to voicemail, started the Porsche, and drove out of the parking lot across town. He pulled into the parking lot, jumped out of the car, and ran down the path in a suit, tie, and formal clothes. He ran into a small fence of trees and saw Molly curled up in a ball and crying. Molly, Molly, please, what happened? She threw herself into his arms, hugged him, and cried even louder, her whole body trembling with sobs. He stroked her hair and back, and after three to four minutes, she calmed down. Molly, did someone offend you? What happened? Did you and your mom quarrel? There was a call from Linda on Molly's phone. There were already ten missed calls from Linda on Molly's phone. His phone rang, and it was Linda again. He was about to answer, but Molly said, Don't answer. We need to talk, Dad. I don't know what to do. You always told me to tell the truth. Be loyal to your family. Don't keep secrets when they eat you up inside. But what if the truth is even worse? What if the truth destroys people? What happens next, Dad? Molly, I see that you are very upset and suffering. It's better to bring the ugly truth than pain out into the open where family and friends can help support and cope. Okay, Dad. Oh, Dad. I'm so sorry. Did your mom call you? If so, did she leave a voicemail? Please, let's listen. Jimmy looked at her strangely but opened the phone and turned on Linda's voicemail. Jimmy, I need to talk to you. Molly and I had a fight, and she ran away. She's clearly upset, and I don't think she clearly understands what she saw that upset her so much. I'm looking for her. Can you call me and tell me where she might be? Or call her and tell her to call me? Jimmy, please know that I love only you and Molly and always will. It seemed like a very strange way to end the message, but Jimmy put it aside and looked at Molly. Molly let out a sarcastic growl when she heard the message. Now, let me play mine. She turned on Linda's first voicemail, and Linda could be heard sobbing as she said, Molly, it's not what you think. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a harmless and meaningless act. Please call me and talk to me about this before you do something stupid. Please talk to me before you talk to your father. And again Molly said, just a harmless act. Jimmy looked at her in confusion and wanted to ask something. Dad, be patient, Molly said. Let's play the next voice message from mom. She pressed play, and Linda said, as if she were begging and pleading, Molly, please talk to me. Don't tell anyone, especially your father. This will destroy him and our family. At these words, Molly jumped up and spat out her anger, saying, You, Mom. Are you saying that I'm destroying the family? What nonsense. You have the nerve to pin this on me. Jimmy was completely confused and said, Molly, you have to tell me what's going on from the very beginning. Dad, are you sure? Molly asked. You heard her. This will destroy our family, although I think Mom has already done it anyway. Jimmy looked at her and said, Molly, you can't go that far and not tell me. Let's get this over with, for God's sake. What's going on? I'm so sorry, Dad. I wasn't feeling well at school, so I decided to go home and called my mom several times, but her phone was turned off. I came home, and Uncle Dan's truck was in the driveway. The front door was locked, so I opened it and went in. There was no one on the ground floor, and then I heard a noise coming from your bedroom. I quietly went upstairs. I am so sorry for you and me and our family. I think it's better to watch this video. She handed the phone to her father, lowered her head to her knees, and began to cry quietly again. Jimmy turned on the video, and the entire shocking, disgusting scene Molly had witnessed played out in full color and sound. 
It was short and ended with Molly's cry of pain and her words to Linda and Dan that snapped them out of their carnal bliss. The look on their faces when they saw Molly standing in the doorway was very hard to watch. It was a mixture of pleasure quickly dissipating, then shock, fear, shame, guilt, anger, all this mixed up in emotions in less than five seconds. Jimmy turned off the phone, and now his head was bowed to his knees as tears began to fall. Why, God, why? How could she do this to us and with my brother? How could they betray me and humiliate me like that? He couldn't bring himself to say more. Molly moved closer to him, hugged him by the shoulders, and said, I feel the same betrayal and shock. I never want to see them again. I hate them for doing this to us, to you, and tearing our family apart. By this time, Linda had called the office directly, and his receptionist could only tell her that he had quickly run out to see a client and would not be returning today. She said she would take the message and suggested she call him and make sure he knew his wife was desperate to talk to him. Linda muttered, No, thank you, and hung up. Dan and Linda gave up on the idea that they would find Molly while driving around in his truck, so he drove back to the house and pulled into the driveway. The house was dark, Jimmy's car was not there, and Molly was unlikely to return. Linda, I hope Molly doesn't do anything rash or stupid. I hope she doesn't talk to Jimmy, you know he will never forgive us for this. I guess I need to get home before Amanda wonders where I am, and I think I'll just keep my head down and see what happens. Damn it, why were we so stupid? Linda looked at him and could barely speak through her sobs and tears. Drop me off, Dan. I need to think about what I will say to Molly. I have to get to her before Jimmy finds out. I have to convince her that it doesn't mean anything, that if she tells Jimmy, our lives will be ruined. With that, she called Molly again, and again the phone went to voicemail. Molly, she shouted into the microphone, Molly, I'm so sorry. Please understand that it didn't mean anything, and it's over. Please call me before you talk to anyone. Please don't tell Jimmy, it will destroy us all. With these words, Linda got out of the car and returned to the house. She called Molly, knowing there would be no answer. She ran to the master bedroom, took off the sheets, and put new ones on the bed. This was her daily routine on Wednesdays after Dan left for the last 10 weeks. She sat down on the bed and cried. Why did I do this? Why would I risk my marriage and family respect for this? Come to think of it, she didn't even like Dan that much. Of course, she didn't love him. Her love for Jimmy never diminished, but she looked back at her behavior and saw how she had begun to emotionally push both him and her daughter away. Why was she always so nagging at Molly? When did she stop talking openly and lovingly to Jimmy? When was the last time she made love to him and showed him any meaningful affection or connection? What the hell is wrong with her? She thought about it long and hard. I think a lot of it has to do with the excitement and trepidation of doing something behind my family's back that's just for me. It was so wrong, but that's part of what made it so exciting, and my life is so boring, and it seemed that no one else needed me. Molly didn't need me and separated and ended her open and loving relationship with me. Jimmy didn't need any worries, he had it all in a fast-paced legal career that didn't leave much time. He devoted his time to Molly, especially after his wife emotionally pushed him away. He knew that their intimate life was completely inadequate, but when he asked Linda what the problem was and whether they should hire a consultant, she refused him, saying that everything was fine. It seemed to her that his response was to emotionally withdraw from her, and it seemed that Jimmy did not need her. But now she realized that it was her fault. Dan told her how hot and attractive she was and how much he needed her. He could not find the same comfort and feeling from his wife, Amanda, as he did from Linda, and since Amanda was six months pregnant with their second child, he didn't get much attention at home. Flirting with Dan and his constant comments about how beautiful and desirable she was eventually led them to cuddle and caress, and it was only a matter of time before it turned into all-consuming, lustful intimate. But now Linda remembered the look of hurt, pain, disgust, betrayal on Molly's face. Molly called her a cheap and she couldn't agree more. Then she thought about Amanda, about Dan and Jimmy's relationship, about his parents and his parents why am I only now realizing how painful and terrible this is? I ruined my life and did it without even thinking about the possible consequences or why I did it. She fell onto the bed, curled up in the fetal position, and cried and cried until a restless sleep overtook her. 
Jimmy and Molly just stood by the trees, crying and talking to each other from time to time. What are we going to do, Dad? Molly asked. I don't know what to do. I feel so much anger and pain because I was hurt by the woman I loved and shared my life with and the older brother who I grew up with and who I thought would always have my back. And now you two are in the middle of this mess, knowing that our family life will never be the same. I don't know if I can even look at Linda, let alone forgive her. But she's your mother, and you always need to have a relationship with her, although it may seem difficult to understand now. But for now, let's just get a hotel room and try to calm down, rest for the night, and deal with how we feel tomorrow. With these words, they went to the center and rented a room at the Hilton Hotel. Jimmy's idea was that tomorrow he would work from his hotel room and call the school office and say that Molly was sick. They could decide what to do next over the weekend. Jimmy called his friend Jack Wilson, the city's district attorney, and gave him a quick rundown of what was going on. He told Jack that his wife would probably file a missing persons report in a day or two and asked Jack if he could hold off on that report and take no action, knowing that Molly was safe with Jimmy and they would be in contact soon. Linda, Jack reluctantly agreed, but told Jimmy that he could only put it off until Monday, so Jimmy should talk to Linda before then. Molly and Jimmy checked into the Hilton Hotel and ordered hamburgers and fries. Then they turned on the TV, lay down in their beds, and watched TV like zombies until sleep finally claimed them, at least for a few hours. Linda woke up around 10 p.m. and saw that neither Molly nor Jimmy had called her back. Oh God, no, she thought. Jimmy must know, otherwise, he would have called or been home a long time ago. Oh God, what have I done? She tried calling Jimmy and Molly's cell phones again, and both immediately went to voicemail, indicating they were disconnected. She wrote to Jimmy, Jimmy, I think you know, but please know that it doesn't mean anything, and I only love you. I'm sorry, but you need to let me know Molly is safe and come home and talk to me. Please let me explain. She really didn't know how or what Jimmy would explain. Would you want to know the details? Would it be better if it was just one time and one mistake? She began to think about her story and what she would tell him. She waited until midnight for a return call or text message, and when there was no response, she crawled under the covers and tried to sleep. It was a restless, sleepless night full of tears and self-hatred for what she had done and the pain she had caused. In the morning, Jimmy and Molly woke up early and went to the Hilton for breakfast. Jimmy called the school and said that Molly would be home for two days and also called his work and said that he would work from home on his cell phone and computer if necessary. He asked that they only call him for urgent matters. He looked at Molly and said, Molly, I'm so sorry for what you saw and that you were dragged into this terrible situation. I, I think you are entering adulthood and all the challenges that life can throw at you have come sooner than I ever hoped. Here you are, 15 years old, and I'm afraid that now you will see from an adult point of view how important those things that I talked about are, loyalty, honesty, truth. Be true to your morals and ethics. You see, there are ugly things in life, but you must do your best to live by your own code of right and wrong. Mom, for some reason, threw that code out the door with her actions with your Uncle Dan, and the loss of trust and deception cannot be undone. I'm going to think about what action to take, and I think that since you're stuck in this with me, I'll let you go ahead and be with me every step of the way and help decide what becomes of our family. First, I'm going to call Dan right now and find out what the hell's going on. Jimmy dialed Dan's number. Dan picked up the phone and said, I'll go out so as not to bother Amanda, we just got out of bed. He ran down the stairs, went out onto the porch, and said, What's going on, Jimmy? Jimmy's anger boiled, and he said, what the hell do you mean what's going on? I think you better tell me what's going on. I want you to tell me honestly and without any nonsense why, when, and for how long you slept with my wife. Dan immediately stopped talking and said, Jimmy, I'm so sorry, man, it just happened. And once we started, we kept coming back for more. But it wasn't about you, Jimmy, and it's not that we're in love or even that interested in each other. It was purely intim. It was just physical relief and an instant feeling of lust and excitement. I'm so sorry, Jimmy, but it didn't really mean anything to either of us. Jimmy, have you spoken to Linda? I think you should ask her these questions I'm asking you. How long? Dan said shyly, the last ten weeks, Jimmy. Every Wednesday, always at your home. 
Jimmy shouted, Why? Why did you betray me? Jimmy, Dan said, It's not about you, it just happened. I just wasn't getting much intimate with pregnant Amanda, and I was so horny and attracted to Linda, and started pursuing her and ended up getting her to kiss. And make out with me, and one thing led to another, and then we ended up in bed. I'm really sorry, you have to forgive us and we'll get through this. Jimmy, we both love you and don't want you to get hurt and don't want to destroy your family, forgive you, Dan, listen, this is how it will be between us. I will never talk to you or visit you again, if I see you, you better run because I will beat you, now you are dead to me, and I no longer have a brother. Dan started apologizing and asking Jimmy to be reasonable and not let this ruin their relationship. Jimmy, it doesn't mean anything, it was just intim, it meant everything to me. Dan, you have destroyed my marriage as well as my trust in both of you. Do you have any idea how this affected Molly? So don't tell me it doesn't mean anything. This means that none of you respected or loved us enough not to cause us the worst pain. With that, Jimmy hung up and decided that this was truly the last time he would talk to Dan. Molly and Jimmy spent Thursday and Friday working in the hotel room, eating at the restaurant, and then going outside to get some fresh air. Linda kept calling, but neither of them answered or even listened to the voicemail. Linda was very worried and didn't know how to contact them. She also called Dan, but he did not pick up or answer any of her calls. She finally went to the police station on Friday afternoon to file a missing persons report. My daughter ran away, and I want to file a missing person report and ask you to help find her. The officer on duty began to collect information from her, and when he found out her daughter's name, husband's name, and address, he asked to wait a few minutes while he went into the office. A few minutes later, Jack Wilson, the district attorney, came out and introduced himself. He led Linda into the interrogation room and asked her to sit down. Mrs. Jacobs, I am a friend of your husband Jimmy. I want you to know that Molly is okay. She's with Jimmy, and he called me and said you might be coming over to file a missing persons report. I have an agreement with him that I will give him an opportunity over the weekend to contact you before taking any action on the missing person report. Molly is with him, they're both safe, and that's all I can tell you for now. He will be in touch, and if he is not there by Monday morning, call me, and I will take action. With these words, he handed her his business card and led her to the exit. She felt his accusing gaze and lack of respect as he stood up and led her towards the exit. She guessed that Jimmy had told him the story and decided that she wouldn't get anywhere by arguing. Jimmy had a lot of friends, and they had his back. She walked to the car, sat down, and cried again. Back at the Hilton, Jimmy looked at Molly and said, Well, I think we should at least talk to your mom and tell her you're okay. Do you want to talk to her? No, Dad, I don't think I ever want to talk to her again. I can't think of any reason why I would accept what she did, and I can't think of any apology that would be acceptable. How do you even know she's telling you the truth? How can you trust her again? Molly, we are hurt. Shocked and betrayed right now, but time will lessen this pain, and we will have to decide if we want to move on or try to fix the family. I'm thinking maybe we should drive up to the house, give her a chance to be truthful about the affair, and then decide. We at least need more clothes and toiletries if we are going to stay in a hotel, and you also have to go back to school on Monday. So you need to grab your backpack and books and get ready. You know what today is? Sunday. Let's go there and give her the opportunity to tell her part of the story, and then we'll decide to stay or take our things and leave. I think we owe it to her to give her a chance to be truthful and tell us what, why, where, for how long. Molly and Jimmy drove up to the house and walked through the front door. The house was quiet and dark except for the kitchen. They entered the kitchen where Linda was sitting, drinking coffee, and looking into her cup. She looked as if she had aged ten years since he had seen her. Her face was swollen with red spots, her eye makeup had been partially washed away by her tears, and she hadn't washed it off or replaced it. Her hair was a mess, unkempt and unwashed. When she looked up and saw them, she immediately jumped out of her chair and tried to run to Molly and hug her. Molly raised her arms and pushed her away, then walked around to the other side, avoiding contact with her mother. Jimmy did the same. Linda. We're back to talk to you about what you did and why you think you did it. You've caused us both great pain, you've lost our love and trust in you, and I don't know if there's any closure to what Molly saw and what she recorded on video. 
I want to at least give a chance to tell my side of the story. Linda was crying slightly, and her nose was running. She grabbed a tissue, wiped her eyes, blew her nose, and looked at them both. I'm really sorry, please know that this has nothing to do with either of you. I love you both more than life itself and don't want to lose you. Jimmy, it was just intimate, it didn't mean anything. This was the first and only time this happened, and it will never happen again. We can get through this, don't leave our marriage because of a one-time mistake and meaningless intim. Having told this lie, she turned away, and when she looked back, she saw that Jimmy was ready to explode with anger. Looking at Molly, Jimmy said, I think we'll go with plan B. Molly left the kitchen and went up to her room to pack her clothes and personal items and grab her backpack. After Molly left the room, Jimmy looked at Linda and shouted, So you're going to use all the standard lines instead of telling me the truth? It was just meaningless in him, it didn't mean anything. Oh, and by the way, your nonsense about this being the first and only time really shows me that you have no problem with lying and deception. I talked to Dan, and I know this has been going on for 10 weeks, and I saw a video of you committing adultery with him and humiliating me while you were doing it. So who's lying, you or Dan? I know it's you, and I know I won't get any truth or understanding from talking to you. I told Dan that he was dead to me and I would never see or speak to him again. It's not so easy to do with you, but at the moment, that's exactly how I feel. And don't tell me that our marriage is ruined because of one mistake. It wasn't just one mistake, it was an ongoing affair that you wouldn't have stopped if Molly hadn't walked in on you. And you seem to be only worried about being caught. You betrayed and disrespected your family and did this to my brother and in my bed. So don't tell me that I'm giving up on marriage when you gave up on it the first time you started flirting and having an emotional and then intimate relationship with Dan. How do you think your 15-year-old daughter will be able to cope with what she saw? With that, Jimmy turned and ran upstairs to the bedroom. Linda collapsed on the floor, sobbing. She thought she could help her case by lying about how long the affair lasted and trying to tell him that it was pointless and he should forgive her. She had never seen him so enraged, and now she wondered if there was even a chance of reconciliation with her husband and daughter. She was shocked by the pain and anger caused by her betrayal that she saw on their faces. A few minutes later, Molly and Jimmy came down with full suitcases. Jimmy took off his wedding ring, placed it on the counter, and they walked out in silence. Linda was left. Lying on the kitchen floor, curled up in a ball and crying. Jimmy and Molly returned to the Hilton, but Jimmy began looking at apartments that were close to the school and not too far from his office. He called several rental agencies, and by the end of the day, he had a six-month lease on a fairly new two-bedroom, two-bath apartment with a landscaped pool and spa, barbecue grills and tables, and a gym. The next morning, Jimmy took Molly to school, returned, and moved their modest wardrobe and belongings into the apartment. Jimmy got to work immediately, called his financial advisors, and began dividing his pre-tax savings, checks, and joint accounts into one account in his name and another in Linda's name. He then contacted a reputable divorce lawyer who he knew had a very good reputation and made an appointment for that afternoon. His planners called him back and told him that since he had set up some college funds for his daughter, he could take a very large portion of his joint savings and investment accounts and put them in trust to fund her college and it would not be available under any divorce settlement. He also changed his insurance beneficiary to Molly. After 10 days, the divorce strategy and all its financial adjustments were ready. He told his lawyer to start filing the divorce papers but didn't file them until they heard from Jimmy. For the past 10 days, Linda had been calling and texting Molly and Jimmy, begging them to talk, begging them to go to marriage counseling, and begging them to come home. Jimmy instructed the security at his office not to allow her onto the property. Molly went to the school's vice principal, explained the situation, and convinced him that Linda should not be allowed on school grounds. Around this time, Molly heard from Linda's parents. They called her and left a voicemail which confused Molly. Basically, it said they didn't know why Molly and Jimmy were treating their daughter so badly over a minor disagreement and how could they be so cruel as to leave and not talk to her. Molly decided to call Jimmy's parents and see if they had heard anything. She called them and asked, Hello Grandma, how are you? Have you been in contact with the family and what's new? I know we haven't seen each other for several weeks. They said it was really nothing new, they were just waiting for Dan and Amanda's baby to be born. 
They said Dan and Amanda were coming over for brunch the following weekend and asked if Linda, Jimmy, and Molly would like to come. Molly quickly realized that no one in the family really knew what was going on. Apparently, Linda didn't tell her parents the real truth, and obviously Dan never discussed it with Amanda or his parents. That same evening, Jimmy received a call from Linda's sister, Sherry, who scolded him for taking Molly and leaving Linda for such a minor reason as a disagreement about Molly and her friend's schoolwork. How could you be so cruel, Jimmy? This doesn't sound like you at all. Jimmy simply said that there were personal issues between him and Linda that would take time to resolve. Twenty minutes after this call, Linda's parents called with the same message. How can you be so cruel as to leave because of some minor disputes and disagreements? At the end of the evening, Jimmy's parents called and asked if Linda, Jimmy, and Dan would come over for brunch. Molly saw that Jimmy was trying to avoid accusations, but neither Linda nor Dan would tell anyone the truth about what was really going on. Molly looked at him and said, Well, obviously neither Linda nor Dan told anything close to the real story to the family, and it turns out to be your fault. She was furious, but her father just shrugged and said that everything would work out on its own. Two weeks later, after much soul-searching, self-reflection, and conversations with Molly, Jimmy decided that his love for Linda. The pain of being betrayed, the deception, and unwillingness to admit that she had not kept her wedding vows was too much for him to forgive. It was also clear that she didn't take any responsibility for what she did to her family, and neither did Dan. He decided it was all over and asked his lawyers to serve Linda with divorce papers. Linda sat at home trying to decide what strategy she could use to get Jimmy and Molly home so she could work on repairing her relationship. She knew she had hurt them, but she tried to convince herself that it was just meaningless intimate, that it was over, and could go back to normal. She told herself that they would miss her and come back, and when they returned, she would be the most loving wife and mother she could be. While she was wondering how to get Jimmy to talk to her, she heard a car pull up, and a few moments later, there was a knock on the door. She looked out the window and saw a young man in a suit looking at her. She opened the door, and he asked, Are you Linda Jacobs? Worried that maybe something had happened to Molly or Jimmy, she said yes. The young man handed her an 8x11 inch folder and said, Mrs. Jacobs, you have been served. He quickly took a photo of her with the package and then turned and walked back to his car. Linda didn't understand what he was talking about, so she went into the living room, sat down on the sofa, and opened the envelope. She pulled out the documents and saw a petition for divorce at the top of the first page. Her eyes filled with tears. She dropped the documents and for the first time truly realized that she had abandoned her marriage and family for some lousy reason. A few days after Linda received her divorce petition, Jimmy began receiving calls from all directions. Both Linda's parents and his parents accused Jimmy of divorcing his wife over minor differences and arguments. Then Dan's wife, Amanda, called and scolded him, Jimmy, how can you stop talking to Dan because of arguments over tools? And how can you think about divorcing Linda for such trivial reasons? You need help, Jimmy, maybe a consultation. Jimmy tried not to pay any attention to all this, and his standard line on the phone was that this was a very private matter between Linda, Molly, and himself. They themselves should go back and ask Linda if they really wanted to understand why there wouldn't be reconciliation and why divorce is the only way forward for him. But it didn't work. They called him all the time. Then they started calling Molly with the same words and trying to persuade her to come home and be with her mother whose heart was broken. Molly saw how much pain this caused Jimmy and how the whole family now made him out to be the bad guy. She clearly saw that Dan never told anyone the truth and blamed his problems with Jimmy on the loss of some of Jimmy's tools. Molly saw that Linda was trying to muster all the family resources to get Jimmy and Molly to come back, and she never admitted what she had done or told them the real story. She knew that Jimmy was too ethical to spread dirt and the real truth that would destroy Linda and Dan's relationship with their family. But Molly had had enough. She took out her computer and wrote an email to the whole family. It read, To all the family that is so quick to blame my dad for all the problems between my mom and us and between Dan and him, it pains me greatly to send you the attached video. And I know it will shock and hurt you all just as it did me when I walked into this nightmare and recorded it. It's extremely unfair that Jimmy should be punished by his family for something he didn't do. He was betrayed by his wife, brother, and now his family. I'm over it. 
please look at this and ask yourself what you would do if you were in my father's shoes. What would you do in my situation? What would you do if two people you thought loved you and protected you and would always be on your side betrayed you in the most terrible way and continued to lie about it and did not take responsibility for it? Please watch the attached video privately, and then you can talk whatever you want to my mom and Uncle Dan about how Dad should react. She copied the addresses of the entire family, her father, who she knew would go crazy, but she felt obligated to support him and Linda and Dan. Then she clicked the submit button. Linda was at work and did not see her personal email, and her phone was turned off. When she walked out into the parking lot and into her car at the end of the day, she turned on her phone hoping to see some kind of response from Jimmy to her daily calls begging for forgiveness, begging him to let her explain everything, begging him to come home and talk. Instead, she saw missed calls from her parents, from Amanda, and from Jimmy's parents. First, she listened to the voicemail from Amanda. You are a and a fallen woman. Not only did you ruin Jimmy's life with your dirty affair with Dan, but you also ruined my life. I never want to talk to you again, and I will be Jimmy's strongest witness in the divorce. He treated you with respect and love and did everything for his family, and you threw it all away with your cheap behavior. Maybe Dan will want to come and stay with you because his fifth place is getting kicked out of here tonight. Linda wasn't entirely sure if Dan had confessed or what had happened but she had an uneasy feeling that the family knew what really happened. The next voice message was from her mother. Linda, how could you? It was so disgusting and painful for me to watch this video. And with brother Jimmy in in your marital bed, and then poor Molly comes in and sees how her mother and uncle disgustingly betray her father, herself, and the whole family. How could you? Linda fell into the driver's seat and began to cry. She opened her email on her iPhone and saw a letter from Molly. She didn't want to open the video because she was pretty sure she knew exactly what it was, but she only did it to see what it would look like from the rest of the family's point of view. It wasn't just a disgusting intimax, but she heard them with Dan. Linda knew it was over. Her attempts to get her family to help and to get Jimmy to talk to her and change his mind were gone forever. What was she thinking? More lies more disrespect, and unwillingness to admit their actions were perhaps as bad as the illicit relationship itself. She realized that she was simply deceiving herself. With Jimmy, there was no turning back. He was too offended, and she realized that she had forever lost any close and loving connection with her daughter. She no longer had the right to even act like a parent towards her. Any advice or guidance she gives her will be a hypocritical joke. She cried for an hour in the parking lot before she was able to start the car and drive home. Three weeks later, Jimmy's lawyer called and said that since she had not signed or returned the divorce papers, he scheduled a court hearing in two weeks. He suggested that she hire a lawyer and prepare. Linda turned to a divorce lawyer on the advice of a friend who had cheated on her husband and gone through a divorce. She was honest and open with the lawyer about what she and Dan did and how she got to this point. After studying the documents, the lawyer told her, your husband is quite generous in that he shares everything 50-50. It doesn't seem like he's hiding any money or trying to hurt you by releasing the video. Except for one thing, he is asking for 100% custody of your daughter. This is very rarely granted by the judge, so at this time, I think we just go to court, deny that part of the divorce petition, and leave it up to the judge. When they appeared in court, it was the first time she had seen Molly or Jimmy for eight weeks. They looked rested, and Molly looked older and more mature than Linda remembered her. Neither Jimmy nor Molly even looked at her, and when she tried to talk to them in the hallway, they simply turned and walked away. I'm so sorry. Please don't hate me forever. I know I don't deserve forgiveness, but I can't stand the thought of you hating me forever. If you could find even some kind of relationship in your heart, I would be very grateful to you. With these words, they entered the courtroom, and the trial began. When they got to the 100% custody part, the judge balked and was ready to make a standard 50-50 decision. At that moment, Jimmy's lawyer looked at Molly and said to the judge, Before you finally decide on my clients, my daughter asked me to come over and quickly talk to you. The judge replied that this was very unusual, but given her age, I would allow it. Molly stepped forward and both lawyers also came to the bench to listen. Please, your honor, Molly turned to the judge, I don't want to live with my mother. She caused irreparable damage to our relationship. 
if you award her custody, I can honestly say I will run away. I won't stay at her house even one night. I want to ask you to watch this short video and understand that this is exactly what I encountered one day when I came home early from school. The man in the video is my uncle, my father's brother. This has been going on for three months now and probably wouldn't have ended if they hadn't been caught. With these words, she turned on the video and handed the judge her phone. His behavior and body language changed as he watched the video. He returned the phone and asked everyone to return to their seats. I am going to give 100% custody to the father as requested, therefore, there will be no child support from my father. And because of his salary, I will not ask my mother to pay child support. With respect to custody, however, I am going to establish that the mother receives a weekly two-hour visit with her daughter. The first six months of the visit will be spent in a counseling session, which will be paid for by the father. He is invited, but his presence is not required. This consultation will be an attempt to find out whether mother and daughter can establish a relationship for the benefit of their future lives. With these words, the judge dismissed the hall, stood up, and retired to his chambers. Linda leaned over the table and cried when she heard Jimmy's 100% custody order over Molly. But at least she had a glimmer of hope that with the help of a psychologist, she could begin some kind of relationship with her daughter and perhaps with Jimmy. This was all she expected in life now, and she desperately wanted to at least make sure her daughter knew that her mother loved her. Linda wanted Molly to understand that not only had she hurt Molly, Jimmy, and the entire family, but she had also ruined her own life. The destruction affected everyone, and perhaps the greatest pain Linda's affair caused was her own. One year later, consultations with Linda and Molly went quite well. Linda was able to better understand why she might have done what she did. Molly could clearly see that Linda was in as much or perhaps even more pain than Jimmy and her, which of course did not mean that Molly could forgive or ever justify her mother. Molly began to sometimes spend weekends at Linda's apartment. Linda learned to treat Molly like an adult, let her make her own decisions, and never criticize her daughter for these decisions. Linda kept apologizing until one day Molly told her to just leave it in the past and never talk about it again. Linda tried to get any information about Jimmy out of her that she could, such as what he looked like, whether he was dating anyone, whether he looked happy. Molly saw that Linda loved him very much, but she knew that Jimmy would never find it in his heart to trust her or love her again. So, Molly never encouraged her mom to become obsessed with Jimmy but instead encouraged her to start dating and find new ways in her own life. Jimmy never attended any counseling. He was able to rekindle his relationship with his parents and had a close relationship with Amanda and her children. She left Dan and was rebuilding her life. Jimmy, true to his word, never responded to any of Dan's or his parents' attempts to get him to make peace with Dan. If Dan was going to a holiday party, dinner, or event with his parents, Jimmy didn't show up. Jimmy hadn't spoken to or seen Dan in a year and was happy with his decision to never see or talk to Dan again. Last year, Jimmy devoted himself entirely to his relationship with Molly first and work second. He didn't date anyone or go to parties with guys. Molly encouraged him to start a new life and date, and she felt that he might be close to joining the dating scene again. Linda looked back on her actions and kicked herself for what she had done, a ten-week affair of meaningless intim, exhilarating for the moment but ruinous for the lives of everyone she truly cares about. The guilt and pain she caused through her actions never left her. She knew that her life would never be the same as it once was. Actions in life have consequences, and she was stupid enough to think nothing of it when she was overcome by lust and the cheap thrill of illicit intimate. She gave up the best life she could afford. She confronted her daughter very early on with the reality of adult pain and problems. And she threw away the love, trust, partnership, and joy that she had in her family, and she knew that she would never experience it again. What made you surprised in today's story? Write your opinion in the comments. See you in the next video.